Hey guys, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the care plan for acquired immune deficiency syndrome, also known as AIDS. So in this lesson, we'll briefly take a look at the pathophysiology and etiology of AIDS, also subjective and objective data, as well as nursing interventions and rationales. Okay, let's take a closer look at AIDS. So this is a sexually transmitted disease of the immune system in which HIV or human immunodeficiency virus destroys specific CD4 cells, leaving the body vulnerable and unable to fight off organisms that cause disease. So infections to someone without AIDS can be worrisome, but to someone with AIDS can be extremely life-threatening. So to be fully diagnosed with AIDS, a person with HIV must have a CD4 count of less than 200. There is no cure, but some treatments can help slow the progression of the disease. AIDS develops from the HIV virus that destroys CD4 cells, like I mentioned, which are basically white blood cells that help fight disease. So it may take several years for the virus to progress to AIDS, if it does at all. It is spread through contact with bodily secretions from having sex, sharing needles, blood transfusions, pregnancy, um, possibly delivery, or breastfeeding. So the desired outcome is optimal immune response in the patient and to minimize the risk of infections. So let's take a look at some of the subjective as well as objective data that your patient with AIDS may present with. Now remember, subjective data, these are going to be things that are based on your patient's opinions or feelings. So for AIDS, they might complain of a headache, muscle aches, joint pain, sore throat, and fatigue. Objective or measurable data might include fever, rash, painful mouth sores, swollen lymph glands, which are mainly on the neck, diarrhea, weight loss, thrush, which is oral yeast infection, and maybe shingles or herpes zoster. So let's take a look at some of the nursing interventions when caring for a patient with AIDS. Assess and manage pain as tissue inflammation and autonomic responses may cause significant pain in AIDS patients. So ma manage this with analgesics, positioning, non-pharmacological interventions such as guided imagery, deep breathing, and meditation. Assess the patient's respiratory status as anemia and hypoxemia are common side effects of anorexia, which can lead to decreased amount of oxygen available for cellular uptake. So provide supplemental oxygen to your patient if necessary. Assess and maintain the patient's fluid balance to avoid dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. Be sure to assess skin turgor, mucous membranes, and thirst in your patient. Severe vomiting, diarrhea, fever, sweating, this all can contribute to fluid loss. Also, fatigue is a common problem with patients with AIDS, so encourage patients to provide as much self-care as possible to promote their independence. Allow for rest periods to conserve energy for important functions like eating. So simple infections can be detrimental for an AIDS patient, so it is super important that patients and caregivers understand the need to reduce infection. Encourage good hand hygiene, as well as clean nails. Healthcare staff must remember to use PPE when caring for patients, including gown, gloves, and a mask if needed. Assess your patient's buccal mucosa and their ability to chew, to taste, as well as to swallow. Painful oral lesions make eating difficult, and patients often have poor nutrition for this reason. So encourage and provide regular oral care to increase their appetite and reduce oral discomfort. And as far as medications are concerned, most 
are given to treat the symptoms, things maybe like ondansetron um, or sulcophate, anti-HIV medications are available and help to prevent the replication of the virus in the body. Lifestyle and nutrition education is critical for a patient with AIDS. Encourage patients to correct any lifestyle habits that lead to worsening of symptoms or spread of the disease. Avoid drug use, sharing of needles, and encourage patients to inform sexual partners of the disease. Some foods, if undercooked, can lead to foodborne illnesses, which may be severe for these patients. So avoid raw eggs and meats. Encourage the patient to eat a healthy diet to increase immune function. Finally, provide patient education regarding the disease, meaning correct any myths or misconceptions and impress the importance of infection prevention to help reduce the risk of infection. Okay, guys, here is a look at the completed care plan for AIDS. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.